Hey, I'm live. This is part of the weekend of fearlessness, y'all. I am completely late for church, where I have deacon duty, but this occurred to me on my way out to the truck, and I absolutely feel like I have to say it to you right now. I've been thinking about all the performative gestures that I have seen on social media and even among my own friends. And I got to tell y'all, I don't want to go back to 1972. I also don't want to go back to 2016. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? The pussy hats, the safety pins. These gestures that are meant to assuage and give dopamine hits to dominant culture, but at the end of the day, did nothing for the people that dominant culture, particularly the cohort that I find myself talking to, say that they stood for and with. All of the tchotchkes and signs and banners for Black Lives Matter of 2020 that are now discarded and forgotten, along with the prophetic voices that could have led the way. Here's the dirty little secret that we really need to confront. There's a cohort of people, including those who say all the right words, wear all the right clothes, have all the right subscriptions, and know all the right catchphrases, don't want you to know. They're ambivalent about both the scope and the reach and the import of this. They know that at the end of the day, and I'll, I'll be real blunt here, it might even be you, they know that at the end of the day, even though the shit has definitely hit the fan, that when it comes down to it, their lives may be inconvenienced, but they will not be annihilated. At least not this week. So they can afford to do the things that feel good in the moment. We're going to need more than that, y'all. We're going to need more than that. The reason that I have been talking about relentless reliability and learning how to have hard but crucial conversations without blowing up, shutting down, or running away, or having the other person blow up, shut down, or run away because of your self-indulgent, unbridled self-expression, because of gestures that contain way more heat than light, because of the prediction of dominant culture in general, and lovingly white women in particular, to turn their heads at the nearest shiny thing. We're going to be talking about all this after I finish my duties. I've got about six more shorts that I want to do. And I also want to start the Relational Ethics series. And I also want to start how to truly be friends with black and brown people without annihilating them without contempt, without irresponsibility, without unreliability. We have had our hearts broken, broken since 2016. And all the reset buttons that white people have insisted that we push. And now, now that they feel that it affects them, they use our words, they use our images, they use our playbook in service to themselves and lovingly if you're watching this in service to yourself we are going to have to learn how to be effective effective workers here and not only for yourself and not only for your kids and not only for the people you know and not only for your zip code for everyone otherwise this is just sound and fury just sound and fury I got to go. I am so late. But if you want to hear more, make sure you check out Lace on Race on the Facebook page and also on the website. We are going to be hitting this hard along with the skills and the tools you are going to need for this journey that is going to take longer than a weekend. Just letting you know. I'll be here walking with you side by side with unrelenting resolve.
I hope you join me.